It's not often I get three posts, one after the other, all asking me to look at the same thing. In this case, a claim by the blog No Trick Zone. If you followed my climate change series, you'll know that this site is notorious for misrepresenting science, and the latest offering is no exception. So I'm going to do a very quick and timely response. The blog claimed, citing a researcher called Scafetta, that estimates for climate sensitivity have been tending towards zero, based on what it calls published papers. So I took a look at the very first one on the list. And it wasn't a published paper at all. It was a blog called Toutes les Energies. And it isn't just my opinion that it's a blog, it even calls itself a blog. This blog is a free space for French-speaking writers. As for the author, Franz Karl Reinhardt, he has no training or expertise in the field of climate. He's an electrical engineer. The big clue that this is something more than a scientific endeavour is that Reinhardt mixes political opinion with his conclusion. Demands for sequestering CO2 are unjustified, and trading of CO2 certificates is an economic absurdity. Well, maybe that got put to the top of the list by mistake. Let's have a look at the second one on the list. That's a paper published in an online journal called GeoResJ that started four years ago and has announced that it's folding next year. It's not on the master journals list, which means it's not recognised as a proper academic journal. Not only that, the paper itself has been criticised by leading climate scientists as seriously flawed and junk science. According to Gavin Schmidt, the authors missed out the entire period of recent warming in their models because of a 35-year error, so that 1965 became the year 2000. Benjamin Henley of the University of Melbourne said the paper had used only six paleoclimate records when there are nearly 700 to choose from. So why would a journal, even one that's not even recognised as a journal, want to publish junk science? Because... In this day and age, anyone can start an online journal and charge people to have their work published, and often the editors don't much care about the content. Hence we see papers like this one titled Get Me Off Your F***ing Mailing List! The third paper on the list was published in the International Journal of Atmospheric Sciences, which sounds very formidable, but in fact it's just another pay-to-play journal. This one is published in Egypt, And again, it's not a recognised journal on the master journals list. Unfortunately, the rise of the internet has led to the creation of thousands of these online so-called journals. Some of them are reasonably good, others are just money-making machines for publishers. I've explained how you can tell the difference in my video, Can We Trust Peer-Reviewed Papers? So the problem is, it's now very easy to get pretty much anything published, which is why we all need to be careful and check the reputation of something that calls itself a journal. Scafetta's graph that No Trick Zone published to support its claim, in fact, emphasises this very point. The number of studies on climate sensitivity between 2000 and 2010 was on average 1.3 a year. But with the rise of blogs and online publishing since then, that number has shot up. In just four years, between 2011 and 2014, 21 so-called papers on this subject were published. That's more than five a year. The fact that the top three so-called published papers were published in obscure online journals and a blog, and one of them has been critiqued as flawed junk science, doesn't say much for the quality of the list or the robustness of the conclusion.